Hello, this is Matthew Robert Payne from Australia. This is a teaching on 1 Corinthians 14, verse 4. I pray that uh, this will reach deeply into your heart and uh, I explain this quite simply for you. Uh, I suggest, if you can, if you've got the time, <coughs> to go back to 1 Corinthians 14, 1 and watch it from that point on. It'll uh, give this context and uh, give you understanding. If uh, you can't, uh, haven't got the time to spend 25 minutes uh, to uh, watch those uh, teachings, uh, I suggest you get your Bible out and read verse 1 to verse 3 before you listen to this. Okay, verse 4, uh, one, one to, um, uh, yeah, so this is uh, 14 verse 4, okay. <clears throat> he who speaks in the tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Okay, now we spoke in um, chapter uh, 3, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3, what the meaning of edification is was and the meaning of edification that I got off an online dictionary was an intellectual, moral and spiritual improvement, enlightenment and guidance. So uh, when when the Apostle Paul, and uh, remember his apostle, he wrote a third of the New Testament, he's very smart, he's very in touch with God. I mean this is the guy this is a guy that one day he preached and he was preaching for 12 hours and someone fell off the roof. Have you ever been to a 12 hour sermon? Uh, by the time I get through these passages, you will have uh, had five to six hours worth of sermon. If you uh, watched these passages all in a row, it'd probably be five to six hours. Well, you'd have to watch double that to get to where Paul was at the 12 hour mark. At that time, someone fell out of the roof. Paul went down, raised him from the dead, and then spoke for another six hours. The people that were listening to Paul listened for 18 hours. Have you ever listened to anyone for that amount of time? That'd have to be very interesting. That interesting is the anointing of God that was on Paul. He was a powerful, powerful, powerful man of God. So when he says things in this series, if you're going through this series one by one, watching him with me, understand that this is one of the most qualified people, qualified Christians in the world speaking. He's a powerful man. Raised people from the dead, healed people. He pray on a handkerchief and someone would get the handkerchief and be healed. Demons would come out of him just from getting a handkerchief. Powerful man. So <clears throat> with that in mind, listen to what he says. He who speaks in tongues edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. Now, when you're speaking in tongues, you don't encourage yourself, you don't enlighten yourself, you don't improve yourself intellectually, morally and spiritually, and you don't give yourself guidance. As you're speaking in the tongues, those things don't happen. But speaking in tongues in prayer will achieve an intellectual, moral and spiritual improvement. It'll lead you to enlightenment and it'll lead you to guidance from God. In other words, the Holy Spirit will pray through you and transform you. Your, your prayer will be, the prayer will be answered and you'll be a different person. It's amazing how faith-filled your prayer is when you're speaking in tongues. You pray for things that you wouldn't pray for in English, but God knows you need them. So, <clears throat> when you're praying in tongues, you're encouraging yourself. But a person who prophesies edifies the church. He, he brings intellectual, moral, spiritual improvement, enlightenment and guidance to the church. Someone who prophesies does all of those things to the church. 
Now you've got to remember that church is singular and corporate. The, the, the church is made up of individuals in the body of Christ and the church is made up of the whole congregation of the body of Christ. And different denominations and different churches. It's made up of the whole church in the world. It's made up of individual churches like one you attend and it's made up of individuals. So the gift of prophecy can impact one person that you encourage and prophesy over. It can encourage your whole church if you speak corporately in a public meeting. Or it can encourage the whole world if you do a prophecy over your country or, or the world. Prophecy is a powerful gift and the church is worldwide in your own building, in the church you go to, and in individuals. The gift of prophecy is a tremendous gift. It's a gift for everybody. And before you get through this series, you'll know that the gift is for you. And the Lord wants you to have the gift. Uh, it's a tremendous gift. It's an exciting gift. It's something that... Uh, I love, I passionately love the gift of prophecy. It's just such an exciting thing to be just a problem solver, to be an encourager, to bring words to people that fill their eyes up with tears. So many times I've seen people's eyes fill with tears just from a couple of sentences I've said from God. Ah, oh, yes, many people. I was in a 16-year delusion thinking that I was the last Elijah that was going to come and judge the world in the end times. And <clears throat> none of my family, none of my ministers, none of my churches, no Christians, no psychiatrists, no one could talk me out of that delusion. That's the good thing about a delusion is you think you're right and no one's arguments make sense to you. But then one young prophet said that Jesus spoke to him on a train on the way out and and told him to tell me something and I'm not going to like the message and I said did Jesus really tell you to tell me yeah and you think I'm not going to like the message yeah well I've heard lots of messages of God I didn't like tell me he said Jesus told me to tell you you're not one of the two witnesses but you're going to know them when they're on earth and it it busted me out of the 16 year delusion totally busted me out because it had the Holy Spirit's power on the word I knew it was true as soon as it came out of his mouth I knew Jesus had told him that that was my prayer for 16 years Lord tell me it's not me tell me it's not me for 16 years I'd had a demon pretending to be Jesus telling me I was and it totally broke that demon off my life Prophecy solves people's problems. You, you've got the answer for everyone. Now you haven't got the answer emotionally and spiritually and biblically with your knowledge of the Word of God, psychology and counselling. You haven't got answers for everyone. But if God can speak directly through you for five minutes, He's got an answer for anything. He can tell you the weight of the... Uh, he could tell you the weight of concrete that were in the Twin Towers exactly he could tell you the amount of glass that is in uh, your tallest building in the United States he could tell you the uh, ha ha what are the dimensions of glass if it was one sheet he could tell you the weight of the glass in the tallest building in America he could tell you the number of grains of sand in the whole world it's so easy for him just to spit out a number. Now you'd be writing a lot of numbers on that sheet. Right? Billions, trillions, right? You'd have to get ready. You, who knows, you might be writing for a month of figures, right? If you were to write that figure down. It may be so huge, I can't even contemplate it. But God could tell you that in an instant. God is so smart. And in gift of prophecy, when you've got the gift of prophecy, you can be that smart for that five minutes or for that minute that you're speaking to a person. Or wouldn't you like that? Paul says to earnestly desire that gift. Why don't you write to me at my website, find my website and write to me and get the gift.